Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We have a really special webcast today with Jennifer Goss. Um, she joined us last year, and I think people were really inspired by uh, the program that she offered. Um, Jennifer is a teacher um, at Rocky Lee High School in Staunton, Virginia. She teaches social studies, um, and she teaches AP U.S. government and politics, and U.S. and Virginia history. History Day teacher, and she also teaches an elective um, on the Holocaust and on genocide. Um, so today she's joining us to talk about um, how students can incorporate the conflict and compromise theme with projects on the Holocaust, and also how to find, access, and use um, primary sources in your History Day projects. So. Um, I think it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to um, hearing what you have to say uh, again, Jennifer, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Alan. I look forward to working with all of the teachers in New Mexico this afternoon. So without further ado, I am going to uh, turn on my screen share. I'm going to actually turn off my camera so we can focus on what's on the screen. Um, and I'm going to share with you uh, some basics about echoes and reflections today, as well as some information on specific ways that you can incorporate the topic of the Holocaust and the resources provided by echoes and reflections into this year's National History Day theme, Conflict and Compromise. So some of you might already be familiar with Echoes and Reflections, but if you're not today, we're going to be providing you with just a very brief overview of the resource itself, as well as our approach to teaching about the Holocaust, not only in your classroom, but also in the context of National History Day. We're going to focus more on the print and digital content of Echoes and Reflections and how they can help to supplement National History Day and also have you explore our multimedia assets, including the correlated visual history testimonies that are integrated throughout our teacher resources, as well as the variety of additional materials that you can utilize with your students and showcase them in a way that can help them explore these themes for National History Day. And hopefully throughout our program this afternoon, you'll also be able to enhance your knowledge about the Holocaust and perhaps look at it from some different perspectives as we look towards the 2018 theme. And for those of you that are familiar with Echoes and Reflections, you may know that this particular set of resources does address Common Core State Standards. I'm showcasing here for you just some um, basic standards from our first lesson, which covers the breadth of studying the Holocaust um, as they apply to the English and Language Arts Standards. For each of our uh, pieces throughout our teacher resource set, we do have alignments to the Common Core State Standards. And you know, sometimes administration asks us to you know, talk about how National History Day helps to meet our students' needs in addressing the Common Core State Standards. And so we've done a lot of that heavy lifting for you. And as we get to our website, I'll show you where to find those pieces as well. It's hard to believe that here in Virginia, we are approaching the end of our first quarter of our school year. And I know that some of you are well into your school years as well. And you've been working with your students on National History Day 2018. I know that personally, my students that are going to be doing National History Day this year have already really been grappling with this topic. It's a very challenging one. I think last year's topic, taking a stand, was pretty clear cut and the students were able to quickly find uh, topical things to take a look at for their various projects. This year's theme requires some deeper thinking and uh, having students think about the, the thought of you know, conflict and how it leads to compromise or how compromises sometimes lead to conflict when they fail or when unexpected things happen. American history is certainly rife with incidences that we can study. Uh, the Holocaust, though, has been a trickier topic for my students. Uh, I allow my students in my Holocaust and Genocide elective to choose to do a National History Day project as one of their core projects for our course. And many of them are very interested in doing this, but have really had to do some deeper thinking 
And so the benefit that you will have and your students will have tonight is seeing how some of the deeper thinking that my students have done has led to some topic suggestions within this year's National History Day theme. So I'm excited to share that with you. Before we get to that, though, I do want to just share some basic pedagogical principles that Echoes and Reflections has when teaching about the Holocaust. And again, with National History Day, while many of us serve in more of an advisory role for our students, we do want to make sure that we follow these basic principles and to make sure that our students are able to define the terms and find the resources and tools to define these terms that they'll be encountering in the study and research that they're doing within the field of the Holocaust. We also want to emphasize to them to look at the human story. Oftentimes when we're thinking about you know, the conflict of the Holocaust itself, we're thinking of the six million. But those six million that died during the Holocaust were six million individual human beings, which each had their own story. And in looking at some of these stories, we can see some of the richer context that can even examine our National History Day theme this year. And we'll talk more about that momentarily. Of course, using primary source materials is a basic component of National History Day. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about working with ECHOES in National History Day, because it's a perfect marriage in both that area, as well as the next one, encouraging inquiry-based learning and critical thinking. So it makes for a perfect partnership. And lastly, as with teaching any tough topic area, we want to make sure that we provide a supportive learning environment for our students. Oftentimes, our National History Day students are performing research outside of the classroom. And while many of our students are very independent and move along at their own pace, we want to make sure, particularly with tough topics like the Holocaust, that we're providing some one-on-one -on -one time when possible to help them unpack some of the difficult concepts and contexts that they will be encountering in research in this subject area. For those of you that are familiar with ECHOES, you may also know in our previous print iteration, we were structured around 10 lessons. In just a moment, I'm going to be introducing you to our all new digital resources on our newly reconstructed website. And those same 10 lessons are still available with added digital context. We also now have a supplemental lesson on contemporary anti-Semitism that has a lot of great resources as well for National History Day that we'll be taking a look at. So without further ado, I'm going to take us to our all-new website. All right, and Ellen, if you can just let me know in the chat box if you are seeing the website, that would be great. Okay, awesome. Um, so with that, I'm going to show you the basics of the site. Um, this looks quite different than the site that you may have used with your students last year. Um, we have a lot of information on our front page about the different additional ways that you can interact with Echoes. Um, but I also want to show you here the links to some resources that can help your students. The very first thing, very basically, is our audio glossary. And this is a new version of our old glossary. It's a great resource for students that are doing National History Day because oftentimes when they're encountering primary and secondary sources about the Holocaust, it may contain language that they're not familiar with. And so you can embed this link in your National History Google Classroom or your Canvas. The students can go here on their own to find out the names of the, excuse me, the um, definitions of words that they encounter, or even the pronunciation, which can be a challenge for our students, particularly when they are doing documentaries or perhaps doing their oral presentations. Uh, so any words that have a German pronunciation, for example, like a Pell, which is a word that they might encounter, you can hover over it and it will also give you the audio. So that makes a great resource for students as well. Available here also in the toolbar is our timeline. 
so it can help students examine additional events that are occurring in the context of the events that they're choosing to focus on for their National History Day project. The timeline spans from 1933 to 1945, which is generally considered to be the years the Holocaust was actively occurring. And so if a student is examining an event, for example, that happened in 1944, they can go here and see, oh, while the War Refugee Board is being established in the end of January, what else is happening? Oh, the Siege of Leningrad is ending. And so that can help them additionally develop some context or perhaps they find a primary source, they can correlate the date from that primary source to the timeline to get some help. So those are two very basic resources that students can utilize. Um, for you as an educator, we also have our lesson plans, which you can access here on the left side on the toolbar, or you can access up here under Teach. I'm just going to show you that. It, this is the entrance from the main part of the website, and then again, you would click on Lesson Plans. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the old ECHOES website, you would know that only the full lessons for our Studying the Holocaust, Lesson 1, and our lesson, our new supplemental lesson on contemporary anti-Semitism were available to teachers in full. That has since changed. We have decided to unlock all of the values of ECHOES on this new website, and so we now have all 10 of our lessons over here, as well as our supplemental lesson on contemporary anti-Semitism, and they are available to you in full. And so when you click on lesson three, for example, on Nazi Germany, you can see here our opening quote, which you might be familiar with from our previous set of resources, our key words, those correlations to the common core that I talked about, our good old testimony video guide, which broke down the testimonies by lesson. And then you can go through the lesson as it had been displayed in the old teacher resource guide see the introduction, the objectives, and then the play-by-play -play of the lesson itself. And so what we're going to look at here in lesson three as a starting point for one topic to explore for 2018 History Day is the topic of the Weimar Republic. And the Weimar Republic uh, can be a very fertile topic for National History Day because it shows how in an attempt to create Germany's first democracy in the 20th century, their first democ democracy overall, actually, some compromises were made. And those compromises, unfortunately, in an attempt to bind together the parties of Nazi Germany, ultimately led to the downfall of the democracy. And so in this particular lesson, we have a secondary source handout, which you can see right here by clicking on it. It gives students an overview of the Weimar Republic. You have the ability when you display this to download it. You also have the ability to print it. And you have the ability to simply take this link from the top of the page and share it in an email or in a learning management system with your students. And so this particular piece uh, in exploring conflict and compromise shows how out of World War I, the Weimar Republic was born amidst of an environment of compromise. And then unfortunately, that environment is going to escalate into conflict. And so this is one of those topics that you can approach from either end. You can approach it from the conflict of World War I giving birth to the compromised Weimar Republic, or you can look at it from the aspect of the compromises made within the Weimar Republic leading to the rise of the Nazi Party. And so additionally, within world, uh, excuse me, in, within this lesson on Nazi Germany, we have two maps. Um, we have the map here that shows pre uh, end of World War I Europe before the Treaty of Versailles. And then we have our second map, which shows us Europe after 1919 and the Treaty of Versailles. And if you want to see it in a larger format, you can simply click on the print button which should blow it up into handout form. And this can be made into a handout that you can distribute to your students. So looking at lesson three, you can see here that it is a super portable resource as far as our digital offerings. And you can also uh, manipulate it in a variety of ways to share it with your students, either through printout or through um, digital link sharing. And so I'm having a little trouble 
getting out of the print screen, so I'm going to go back. Doesn't seem to work. Oh, there. If I cancel, we'll head back into lesson three real quick, just for me to show you some of the other resources that exist within lesson three. Um, also in lesson three, and we'll be talking more about testimony in just a moment. There are two testimonies from young men who grew up Jewish in Nazi Germany that talk about the rise of the Weimar Republic and some of the instability that came along with it. And then this lesson goes into anti-Jewish policy, uh, which is another topic that corresponds with Weimar Germany. Um, and you can, your students can use that to build a broader picture. And then from there, it goes into some other topics that are not directly related, in my opinion, to conflict and compromise, but they do help students gain additional context, which is always important for that particular topic. So this is the structure of every lesson that is within the new Echoes and Reflections site. And um, if you have you know, familiarity with one layout, you can port that familiarity into all of the other areas. From here, I want to go into a different area and look at the richness of secondary sources that are available to you in Echoes and Reflections. And so one of the big questions that my students often have in regards to learning about the Holocaust is, why didn't the Jews just leave? And it's a big question, and it's a question that we unpack not only in the Holocaust and Genocide Studies elective that I teach, but also in the context of U.S. history. And so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to share with you the first of two resources in this lesson that take a look at the topic of immigration. And so the first resource that I'm going to display on the screen right now is from the Evian Conference. And it's a fairly short resource, and so I'm going to display it on the screen. And I'd like you to take a moment and read through this resource. And then in the chat box, I'd like you to go ahead and share a way that you think this particular resource could be utilized to build a topic for National History Day. Okay, take about another minute. I see some thoughts coming in. So how could a student take this secondary source piece and build it into a topic for National History Day. Okay, so I see two ideas that have come in, three now. Um, the first one mentions a failure to compromise on immigration. And so the conflict here is we have all of these individuals that need a safe haven, and we have these 32 countries who come in and fail to reach a compromise to deal with the immigration challenge that is going on here. Everyone seems to understand that these are refugees that you know are suffering under Nazi Germany, but no one is willing to take them in, although the, Dem the Dominican Republic does agree to compromise in exchange for huge amounts of money. And so is that really a compromise? Uh, another uh, participant mentions that there is, you know, the compromise that's created 
uh, by this conflict of the Intergovernmental Committee on Refugees. And so it's a solution in a way to help safe haven candidate countries develop opportunities for refugee settlement. However, in the end, it isn't really effective because it doesn't you know, get any funding or authority to make a real difference. And so this can be a challenge sometimes when setting up a topic with students is a lot of times, particularly our younger students, come in with the need to see clear-cut success in their compromises. And the reality is we know as history teachers and those that work with our National History Day students is that success doesn't always happen or success isn't always clear-cut. And so Evian, this particular document on Evian can be used as one starting point to get students to explore this topic. Here it tells us that this particular conference isn't really successful, but it might spark a question in a student's mind, were compromises reached to deal with the refugee problem? You can also steer them to another secondary source piece on this very same issue on the Bermuda Conference. Here we are now, over four years later, nearly five years later, and a second conference is convened. By now, we have reports revealing that the Nazis are intending to exterminate European Jewry. And so a second conference is held. And if you want to take a quick scan through this, take a look and see what the outcome of this conference is. All right, so after your quick scan, I think you can see here that the conflict is continuing, as one of the viewers mentions, because no one is willing to compromise. And there are many other examples that can be provided from this era related to the issue and the conflict over refugees. We have a great primary source piece from this lesson. This is entitled The Refugee. It's a Felix Nussbaum painting. Uh, which I think takes the context that we were given in those two secondary source pieces and now provides a visual. And certainly working with students to recognize that there are many different types of visuals that can be included in National History Day projects aside from film and photos can be a powerful way to expand their thinking. And so this particular image illustrates the refugee conflict and the failure to reach a compromise and its impact on this individual artist. Nussbaum himself is unable to leave. Uh, he is actually in Western Europe in hiding and then ultimately ends up perishing as a victim of the Holocaust after he is exposed. And so again, a, a very personal connection to what can happen when a conflict is not resolved, when a compromise for individuals such as Nussbaum are not reached. And you can utilize this visual with your students and have them unpack it and think about some additional meanings, which again, might help them bring in other layers to their projects. There are additional pieces of art throughout lesson eight that deal with the topics, excuse me, from lesson nine that deal with the topics of uh, immigration and how you know this impacts individuals uh, there is another nussbaum portrait that's available here called the portrait of an identified man and there's another one called the short rapallo so these are just a few examples of some secondary and primary sources that are available to you in echoes and reflections 
We'll be coming back to Echoes in just a moment. But before we do, I want to share with you now a, another resource that is available to you. And that is the resource of testimony. And so I've now landed on the page for the USC Shoah Foundation. Um, and I'm going to share with you uh, just a little clip on background on testimony. I do see we have some other comments, though, in the chat box. But it's interesting to see why compromise was so difficult with Evian and Bermuda. It would be interesting to see to explore that topic. And then also whether the arguments were the same as anti-immigration arguments now. Uh, absolutely could be very powerful, powerful connections. Um, so this next website that I've landed on is Eyewitness. And Eyewitness is a digital platform from our partner, the USC Shoah Foundation. And it provides not only various pre-built activities on a bunch of different topics, some of the topics are even tailored to primary school and university level, but it also provides access to nearly 2,000 testimonies in full length and in part. And these are testimonies that can be very powerful for students to include in their National History Day projects or even just to utilize for resource. And I'm going to start out by sharing with you a great clip to show your students to expand their thinking on testimony. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not realize the audio did not come through. I just got Ellen's message. Um, Ellen, do you know what might be happening on this end that wouldn't allow it to show up? I, I think it's just the way that Google Hangouts interacts with audio from the internet. I, it's it's a hit, hit or miss. <laughs> Oh, bummer. All right. Well, we will do um, 
we have another, uh, I was going to transition from here into a clip from YouTube, um, which may work. So I'll do a, I'll make sure I pull the screen back up to see. Um, so where I was going to head next with this, and if it doesn't work from the audio, I'll uh, send the link to each of you to view. But I was going to share with you a testimony from a gentleman by the name of Saul Lieber. Uh, the clip that we just watched without audio from Eyewitness shares the value of testimony and what we can learn from testimony and the different experiences that it provides. And so sharing that as an intro to students can really open up their minds as to different ways to consider exploring testimony as a primary source when researching their National History Day topic. And the clip that I'm going to show you in just a moment, if it works, is from a gentleman by the name of Saul Lieber. Now, all of the clips that are on the Echoes and Reflections site have biographical profiles. And so I pulled a biographical profile up now on Saul, and it tells us a little bit about where the individual was born and a little bit about their upbringing. Um, in Saul's case, he was one of six children, and his family was in agriculture, and they were very observant but he did go to a public school. And then it takes us through his story during the Holocaust. He ends up being placed in the Warsaw Ghetto and then um, later participates in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, which leads to him ultimately being deported to Majdanek and then through several other labor camps. And then he's eventually liberated on a forced march in May of 1945 and then reunited with a brother in a DP camp in Germany. And then he goes from there to Paris and then to Canada where his interview takes place. And so these little background pieces are great for students to get additional context on the person. And that may also open up some different avenues to bring in. But if this clip works, what I'd like you to think about is how this particular clip can be used to illustrate conflict and compromise with the theme of National History Day in the back of your mind.
Yeah, so I see some uh, input already. Um, you know, the group compromised by bringing Saul into the group. Um, and then he's also compromising his safety for the greater good. And so sometimes compromise can be an, an act, uh, a selfless act in the fact that Saul was taking a risk to take a stand in a way. So reflecting back to last year's theme, but compromising his personal safety. Um, they compromised with each other so they could start a conflict with the Germans. So you could say the conflict of the ghetto led to the compromising of his life or of the compromising of the group to bring him in, or the compromises with each other led to a conflict with the Germans. And that's one of the things about this topic that I don't know that we recognized right away as National History Day educators when we received it, was the fact that it can really be used forward, backward, backward, forward, uh, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of flexibility in how students can apply this particular theme and how they can utilize it to examine aspects of history from different lenses. So these are some of the resources that I felt within ECHOES were very useful. There is also in this particular uh, section on Jewish resistance, some other testimonies um, that showcase some of the compromises that people had to make as individuals for the greater good. There's material in this particular lesson on the partisan movement, which was a very challenging movement where Jews in some cases had to uh, make compromises on how they were living and functioning in order to serve the greater good. Um, there's also pieces in here on armed resistance, which can also be a lens through which we examine uh, this particular theme for National History Day. And so uh, there's some great stuff here. There's also some additional resources under our Making Connections, which are featured in every lesson at the very end. You'll see a drop down uh, for Making Connections. And there's one particular piece here, an excerpt from Vladka Meads on both sides of the wall. Vladka compromised her religious identity, living as a Catholic Polish girl in Warsaw to serve the resistance movement. And so that can be another lens through which you can examine uh, the Holocaust with this particular National History Day theme. There were compromises that people had to make to their religion in order to survive. And that can be a very complicated and complex topic. All right, so as we move into um, the latter part of our webinar, I want to take you now to back to Eyewitness. Um, Eyewitness, as I mentioned, is a digital platform from the USC Shoah Foundation. And one of its features, which you as an educator can peruse to view as a jumping off point, is our activities section. And the activities section has um, five main features on it, but there are really only a handful that are going to help you, in particular for National History Day. Our I Walks are a special feature which actually use on site. Um, walking paths to integrate testimony in them. Um, we only have one so far that's available, and so it's likely that it's not in your community. But what we do have, which can be very beneficial for students to think about in the context of national history, are our mini lessons, our mini quests, our info quests, and our video activities. And all of these um, are different ways of examining the Holocaust and other genocides. And some of them do provide lenses into the topic of conflict and compromise. Um, our mini lessons, we currently have about 40 of them available to teachers. Um, and these provide a specific look at uh, various topics that deal with um, items that can be addressed in about 15 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the topic. And so some of these, um, you know, for example, the consequences of winning, which deals with uh, the, an Armenian genocide survivor, have some topics that can be segued into our National History Day theme. We also have other uh, mini lessons, which you could utilize by taking a look at the, the testimonies to see what they have within them that can be used for National History Day. Um, our mini quests are activities that take one to two class periods 
and they have varied outcomes for the actual mini quest if you're using them as an educational activity. Some are collages, journals, um, public service announcements, etc. But again, they can be used to build context for National History Day. I'm going to show you one of those in just a moment. Our info quests use a word cloud format, and our video activities have students actually make mini documentary films. So they can be a great way to practice documentary filmmaking in a more structured atmosphere, which can also be helpful for your students that want to embark on that as their National Day History Day project uh, for the first time. Um, so I'm going to pause here for a moment. I have a couple questions uh, that Ellen wants to share, and then I'm, from there I'm going to go into our mini quest. Sure, I'm just, uh, I have uh, some questions coming in by email and anybody else who wants to submit a question, you can use the chat on the YouTube page or uh, email me at historyday.nmhum.org. Um, so the first question that came in uh, is from a teacher who's wondering, um, is the material that we're looking at, I guess either through the echoes and reflections or through the eyewitness, is it copyrighted? Is it free to use in NHG projects and classrooms? And does anybody need to ask anybody's permission to use it in, in classrooms or in projects? It does not need to um, have permission at all. It is all there to be used in classrooms. And then of course, if a student were to use it for an NHG project, just as long as they pop properly attribute the source, they're more than welcome to utilize it. Um, and the other question, you might want to uh, finish what you're talking about and, and then um, maybe answer this at, at the end, although we're, we're <laughs> this hour's flown by, I have to say. Um, so uh, this is from a teacher who uh, uses the Echoes and Reflections uh, curriculum in, their class, in her classroom and loves it. And she got to attend a workshop once um, and would love to do so again and doesn't know how to find out what is available in her area. That's or a in, great question. Mexico, really, right? <laughs> that's a great question. And I'm going to hold that one until the end because that's how I'm going to end our presentation today is to show teachers how they can learn more. But thank great. you. Thank okay. her for that great question. I'll, I'll quit interrupting here. <laughs> that's okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> so before we uh, head out of eyewitness, just want to draw your attention to a brand new mini quest. Um, and again, the mini quests you can share with students. Any educator can set up an account. The accounts are free. And then you can set up an account for your students. It's pretty user friendly and self explanatory. But if anybody were to have questions on how to navigate it, just check with Ellen and she can put you in touch with myself or somebody else that works with Eyewitness. It can help you better understand how to set it up, but it's super easy to set up access for your students under the students and groups tab. And then once your students have access, you can assign them some mini quests and they don't all have to complete all of them. But if you have a student that might be interested, for example, in this conflict of how children were treated during the Second World War, in particular Jewish and Roma and Sinti children, and then what happens after the war, they could look at this rights of children mini quest. And what this mini quest does, and I'm just gonna fly through it very quickly, is it takes the four C's. So for those of us who are familiar with the National Council for the Social Studies C3 framework, it takes the four C's and it leads children through an activity which has them analyze primary and secondary sources and learn more about how children were treated during the Holocaust and also getting them to think about the rights of children and then how the Holocaust ends up changing how children's legal rights are handled. And so we have the students start out by brainstorming. We give them some information on Janusz Korczak and then we have them examining the Geneva Declaration of the Rights of the Child and the Declaration of the Rights of the Child from 1959. And then from there, if they would continue into the activity, they take a look at an overview video on children in the Holocaust, and then they look at the experiences of three different children, a child in the ghettos, Ellis Lewin, for those of you that are familiar with Echoes, and then we hear from Herman Cohn on life under the Nuremberg Laws, and then we hear from Wellesina McCrary, who talks about life in Auschwitz as a Roma child, as a young girl. Then they reflect on these resources, they do some synthesis, and then from there, if they're continuing on with the activity, they actually create a little mini video that could be shared 
according to the activity on social media, but you could choose to utilize it in your classroom in any way. And again, starting to build some of these basic skills that your students could use to construct a National History Day project. So that is the um, project itself. It has the students share their videos and look at each other's videos. And then they also, there's a component where they communicate with classmates. Now, one other beauty of Eyewitness is, that, as I mentioned, it contains nearly 2,000 resources, 2,000 interviews. So once your students have access, they, through their own dashboard, which they would have when they log in, they can search here uh, out of all of those videos and find videos that they could embed in their National History Day project. And if they wanted, they could even use the We Video online video editor. It's a great video editor. I have professional video editing experience, and I use this at its advanced level, but it has a very basic level, too. And so you can have students that don't have video editing experience get started and get their feet wet with this. And it can be a great way to create a National History Day project because they can also import their own photos, and videos, and music into the Wii Video Editor and then also utilize the testimonies from Eyewitness on it. So that is Eyewitness. It's a very much a crash course. Uh, Eyewitness does offer webinars on how to use Eyewitness, and you're more than welcome to check them out. Um, I'm going to share now with you um, just a very quick look at what other resources we have here on Echoes and Reflections for you to examine. Um, if you're interested in having uh, additional training on Echoes and Reflections, you would go to our Prepare tab. We have monthly webinars on a variety of different topics. For example, we just had one on Tuesday on using Eyewitness. Um, and yesterday we had an overview webinar. Um, we've got one coming up on navigating the redesigned website. We have one on contemporary anti-Semitism, which we didn't get to tackle today, but that has some resources that could be used for National History Day as well. Um, we've got Kristallnacht, um, all kinds of different things coming up. And then we have our in-person programs, um, which it, looking at them here, we've got New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey coming up. But you could also schedule one for New Mexico in order to send out a trainer. We like to have about 25 teachers so it can help to collaborate with neighboring school districts. Um, I'm not sure of how close some of you can get to Scottsdale, but we actually have our refugee training. I'm going to be out in Scottsdale at the end of October. So if that's a feasible trip, you could always check us out there as well. Um, and then we do online classes. We have a three-part module. Um, that's facilitator-led. We have one that just started that you might even still be able to get in on, um, or you could certainly sign up for the one for November. So those are a variety of different ways to work with ECHOES further, not only for National History Day, but within your classrooms. We also have a great video toolbox set for um, our various lessons, which are also 10 to 15 minute videos to help you extend your own personal knowledge on the topic. So that's a very quick overview um, of ECHOES, and um, I would encourage you to, for your little homework assignment, since we didn't get to it tonight, to check out Ursula Levy. She's in Lesson 7, um, and I think she has a really interesting perspective on religious compromise as a method of surviving the Holocaust. And so I would strongly recommend you check out Ursula Levy's testimony in Lesson 7. Um, at this point in time, I'll welcome any questions that you may have. Um, I also invite you to share some things that you learned or things that surprised you or questions that you may have. Um, and you can feel free to share those with Ellen and she can pass them on. Um, and lastly, uh, if you want more information on Echoes and Reflections or you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Ariel Korn, who is our marketing coordinator for Echoes and Reflections. And her email address is displayed here. And you can also reach out to our general email at info at echoes and reflections.org. So I'm going to leave that up on the screen, but exit out so I can see some additional things in the chat box or tune back into Ellen if uh, she has any thoughts for us. Yeah, I'm just sort of sharing out a couple of the things that are, are coming in. One is a, a, a surprise that there's so much new material um, available through the Echoes and Reflections program. 
um, and that it's all free online. Uh, and uh, someone who, uh, I don't know whether it's one thing they learned or one thing they're surprised by, but uh, that nobody could compromise on refugees. And um, I think that's certainly um, one of the interesting things about history is when you when you were able to make the connections to things that are going on now. And uh, I really personally have to say I appreciate what you had to say about the different ways that students can approach the topic of compromise and conflict um, and what it looks like when you discuss it. I mean, why was it so difficult for everybody to come to the table to, to accept refugees when it was clearly a dire situation? Um, why, why was it acceptable to the people to come up with this sort of baloney compromise where they form a commission and then don't fund it? Um, what, what is that saying when people come up with sort of a, a compromise that's a, a front or a sham? <laughs> um, and so I think these are really important stories to tell. And, and Jennifer, I, I guess I also want to say I appreciate how you pointed out to us that we can tell these conflict and com compromise stories in different order. It could be a conflict that leads to a compromise or a compromise that leads to a conflict. And it sort of depends on which end of the story you're, you want to grapple with. Um, and I think a lot of major events in history can be told through a number of these different lenses. And it's lovely to have you, Jennifer, to tell us, to help us see how we can tell some of these stories through, um, materials at Eyewitness and at Echoes and Reflections. Great. Well, I'm glad to have helped out some of our friends in New Mexico today. And uh, certainly, if you have any questions at all, just send them to Ellen, and she'll get in touch, and we'll get you answers. And we hope that this can be a useful resource for you, both for National History Day and in your classroom on a regular basis. I, I have to say, we got lots of fantastic topics um, that came out of last year's History Day that had to do with um, hol Holocaust topics I have never seen dealt with before um, at, at History Day. And so I just thought it was really wonderful that students are um, taking the opportunity to use these resources and explore all kinds of new materials and new stories. That's stories great. That telling. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. And um, anybody who wants to get more of this, um, let's all go to Scottsdale at the end of October. I think that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Little sunshine, some warm weather, and you know, some really great learning. So um, thank you so much, Jennifer. And um, I uh, want to remind everybody who's watching that next Thursday we do have a webinar with Deputy Director of National History Day, Kim Fortney. Uh, she'll be joining us with our two regional coordinators, uh, Louisa Castillo and Erin Gokul, and then ask me anything. So anybody who has any kind of questions for the Deputy Director or our regional coordinators or me, Please tune in next week, and we'll be talking about whatever we're talking about with History Day. So uh, hope everybody has a great afternoon. Hope you have a great afternoon, Jennifer. And again, thank you so much. Thank you, Alan. Take care. Okay, you too.